Hello owners and Michael Costa Racing fans, welcome to episode 23 of Michael Costa Racing TV. Today we're shooting from one of our baby barns and we'll have a quick wander through that later in, in the barn later in the show. Stock standard type of show today, the three weeks that have been, we're one week delayed there. Uh, some up and coming trialers, up and coming r runners and also our track worker of the week. Okay, the couple of weeks that have been, we kicked off with memes heading into town at Eagle Farm on the 7th of the 9th. Uh, she, it was a nice run, she only had the one soft trial leading into that race, and she had a really big blow. I probably thought she was a little bit fitter than I, than I thought, but still it was just to have a nice, uh, nice first up run, see where she's at to make some pivots and tweaks with her gear. It was a nice enough run, she was only beaten by about two lengths in a, in a pretty sharp field, so she's going to really improve from that first up run. Uh, we then had Smug Satisfaction on the same day. Uh, it was a really nice win, an authority win is what uh, Robbie Frad said in the run which was great. Uh, she settled handy Robbie just exposed her around the home turn and she really ran on with it so she's done a super job to to come from running in country Victoria to be a Saturday class winner up here in town and picking up some good prize money for owners which uh, purchased her for 20 grand as a tried horse on an online sale. I, uh, I was a little bit worried with the form coming in what sort of improvement we could have got but she's been uh, been a super buy for the group being a Sebring filly. Uh, we'll have a broodmare uh, sort of career in front of her which is great. Uh, we then had top mate down at Graft on the 10th of the 9th. I said in the last show he's a horse which felt that would need a lot of ground and hasn't blown us away in his track work. He, uh, he only ran fair and he's been since sold on one of the online auction websites. We then had Doombin uh, on the 14th of the 9th. We took Manea there. She ran okay. Uh, we trolled her on the Monday. She trolled well, backed up just at the end of the prep. But the good thing is we've made a few gear changes with her into that last run and they seem to have worked even though we haven't seen that with the results just in what we're seeing here at the stables. So she should, uh, if we kick on with her for another preparation, she's gone the paddock now. Hopefully we've found a few missing links to her. Uh, we then had La Pulga. He ran fourth. It was a really nice run. He just got too far back, uh, ran home nicely. Uh, seen too many was in the same race as well. She just got too far back, ran home nicely. The pattern of the day was to be more forward, so a nice, nice enough run from, from those two. Seen too many has been sent to the paddock. Uh, we then had Sunshine Coast on the 15th of the 9th. We took Perfect Deal up there. She was a cheapy filly that we bought from the English Classic sale for only 16 grand by Dun Deal. Before Dun Deal had sort of hit his straps. And uh, she was a nice solid first up win. It was, uh, it was really good to see her stretch out, get the job done over the line. She's going to be a filly which is going to get over more ground. So it was good to see her get the first up win. She's been sent to the paddock as well to let her mature a little bit further. Okay, back to Eagle Farm on the 21st of the 9th, we had La Pulga. He, he settled, uh, he jumped really well from a wide gate and Brad Stewart made the uh, election to push forward. I think it was a situation where he was either going to be first or last. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, it was trap wide, had to do all the work. He stuck on really well, but uh, just a bit too much work early. It's not a horse which I think is a leader as well. He needs something to follow. Uh, we had smug satisfaction in the first up there. It was a really nice run. Uh, we thought La Scopia was the horse to beat on ratings. It did win, just pipped us on the post. Uh, very happy to run second again with Smug Satisfaction. She's in good order. Uh, we're going to split her runs up and give her just three weeks in between to try and find a bit more improvement in her and she'll head to the races back in uh, town in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, also on the same day at the Gold Coast we had Mish Jam kicking off her career. She was backed off the map. It was absolutely crazy for a horse which had finished 12 lengths last in her last trial. Oh, look, I think she's a progressive filly but she's a filly which is going to need a, a bit of ground and a bit of racing. Uh, she was missed the kick, driven forward, a little bit tough, got a little bit lost around the corner and the best work was late over the last hundred so I think she's, she's showing that she's going to get over a bit of ground, could be a potential filly over a, bit of, uh, a proper bit of ground in the future. Uh, we then had Nothing Needed who won the Pink uh, Ribbon Cup which was great, it was a good race day there at the Gold Coast, uh, huge crowd and uh, it's the second time we've won the Pink Ribbon Cup in the last three years, it was a really nice win so good to see her, her. she's an ultra consistent mare but just keeps on running well, we're looking to hopefully get a city win out of her as well. Then headed down to Grafton on the 23rd, we had Kingley. He settled last from in a big field from a wide gate. He, uh, he was last 
on the turn, wider stint around the home straight, and he ran home nicely. So it was nice to see him get home nicely. It looked like he put in as well. So we'll just be stepping him up over further. He's no world beater, but it looks like he'll have another win in him uh, once we place him right. Uh, we then went to Doombin with Pistolero. He's a horse which I've said that we've never really pushed as a betting proposition the last couple of weeks, just because we're managing a few issues with him. He pulled, uh, he didn't let down, so it's more than likely that he'll be sent to the paddock and uh, we'll discuss with the owners his future moving forward. Okay, some up and coming runners. We've got the Gold Coast this weekend, Flying Machine, Defer and Stay Smart. So three tried horses which have entered the stable. Flying Machine trialled really well at Deegan last start. She's got some behavioural issues uh, going onto the track. So we're hoping that she behaves herself on Saturday. 900 metre race, we found small field, weak enough. On the trial, she should be competitive. I've never won a 900 metre race. We don't generally run in them, but uh, it looks a suitable race for her. As long as she behaves herself, she can get a, a uh, you know, a, a positive run out of the gate. She should be uh, hard to run down, but uh, she's just got to behave herself and she's a little bit cheeky like that. She will be better over further, but it just looks a suitable race first up. Then got Defer and Stay Smart, two tried horses. Uh, they haven't blown our socks off in their track work, so we're just giving them a run to see how they measure up, if we can uh, see if we can get a win out of them for, for the owners. We're gonna, Defer needs a bit of ground, so he's, uh, we'll see where he's at. Stay Smart, he just uh, hasn't blown our socks off in track work, but um, has some form of ability, but we'd just prefer to see them both run before we tip them to our, uh, our, our loyal followers. We then have at Eagle Farm La Pulga. He's found a nice race of 2,000. Uh, still not 100% if he's going to run yet, so backing him up three weeks in a row. We'll make a decision on race morning, uh, but a very suitable race. If he's right, he should be right in the mix. And then up and coming noms next week, we'll have memes in town on Saturday and open 1200. Uh, Miss Gem possibly in a 1300 maiden at the Gold Coast and potentially nothing needed at a midweek on Wednesday. We also have a census running tonight. He's uh, another tried horse from down in Sydney. He's uh, having his first start. I think he's a horse which is going to get over a bit of, bit of ground. So I think this might be a little bit short for him. There is a lot of scratchings in the race, but uh, I do think that he's going to be a horse which is better over ground also. Up and coming trialers on Monday, next week here at the Gold Coast, we've got Diora Diva, Missionary Bay, Willow Tito, Written Verse, Hearts Lifted, Ola Lux, Bold Angel, China Plate, and Firebox. So there'll be a few in there which will be going to the races uh, after this, and a few having their first trials. What we might do in the next episode is highlight the best trialers to watch moving forward. Track worker of the week, last episode we touched on memes. Don't fall off her, I think she's really come on from that run. We've just got to find the right race for her. And this week we're going to touch on Missionary Bay. He had one trial, trialled really well. We trialled him when he was probably still a bit soft in condition. And uh, he's continued to really come on in his work. And trialling again on Monday, as we just said, but he looks to be uh, really improved from his, his last preparation, which is uh, great to see, because he looks like a progressive horse moving forward. So we've done a couple of episodes with some new arrivals, so we thought filming in the one of the baby barns this week will give you a quick wander around. The whole purpose of the baby barn is to bring the horses in from their pre-trains or paddocks and basically it's like a little bit of a preschool. A lot of young horses get sick quite often, a few runny noses, so we try and isolate them a little bit. Give them a bit of education out of the baby barn because they're often paired up together when they're working together. And then once they've had their couple of weeks over here, they'll start to filter into the main barn. So I'll give you, a, we'll have a quick wander around now. So the first horse here we've got, this is a rich enough colt that we bought from the March, March Q to sale. He's by Dev, out of the mare called Devil Inside. You come in. Lovely big chestnut colt. You can see how strong he is. Uh, I've got a lot of time for these rich enoughs and, and this horse has shown some really promising things in his first little bit of preparation. He'll just have a couple more weeks, go through the uh, go through the barriers and then he'll be sent to the paddock. He won't be ready this time around, but uh, he's a very nice horse in the making. Next colt bought from January Magic Millions for only 18 grand, Nakoni colt. It is, it really blows me away every time I watch this horse work in, in the morning that we only paid 18 grand for him. It's a lovely, lovely type, very athletic. 
Uh, the Coney's have really come on and uh, he's just a beautiful horse on type. So 18 grand, we sold him in a couple of minutes. It's an epaulette, uh, he's now, now a gelding as a, as a two year old. He was bought by a client for only 10 grand from the March Cuter sale. So uh, he's going all right. He's, uh, we x-rayed his knees this week and his knees have all come together. So we're, he'll uh, look to have a jump out next week. Got a shooting the wind colt by Bells or Ring, so he's quite well bred as well. He's half his half sister's my country, he's a group winner. We purchased him from the January Magic Millings for 55000 so a great buy. Uh, very, I love this horse's stride, he's showing a lot in his early stages. He's a big boy, but uh, looking to be quite forward as well, which is great. So, Whittington Colt, he was uh, purchased by a client at the March Cuter sales, real two-year-old running, and see so he's just muscly, compact, small, uh, looking pretty forward in his early sort of work. So hoping that he'll be one of our early two-year-old runners. Uh, this is the Mossman Colt that we bought from the January Magic Millions for 80 grand. He's uh, got a good pedigree as well, but just the typical Mossman, nice and plain, big and strong, but he's a lovely horse and he's actually been, uh, been quite forward as well from his uh, being so big. Uh, he'll be looking to have a jump out in a couple of couple of weeks' time. A dissident two-year-old we've just been given. He's only been here a couple of days from one of our uh, our good clients that own Gold Ambition. So he's uh, he's just arrived. So we don't know too much about him at the moment. All right. This is a rich enough colt. He breezed up. Uh, this week at the Magic Moons Breeze Up sales, he was it was done by a, another trainer, and uh, he only breezed up in about 15 seconds, so not too not too flash. So the uh, the stud owners who are putting him through the sale, KBL, have asked us to help help him out. They breezed up again in about two weeks' time, so we'll give him a bit of education here, and hopefully he can breeze up a bit quicker for his owners. This is another breeze up horse for Jerry Harvey. It's a more than ready colt. It's a nice, uh, compact, strong fella. He's, we've only had him for just over a week and a bit, so he's breezing up in the second breeze up as well with the, uh, with the rich enough. I don't mind this horse, so we'll see how he breezes up and uh, if we like him enough, we'll, we'll try and buy him. This is a super one that we bought from June for about 40 grand. He's uh, just come in, in. He, uh, he's only had a couple of days, so we don't know haven't learned too much about him at the moment, but he's, he's quite a nice type, so we'll, uh, we'll see how he goes. Just give him a nice, easy foundation a couple of weeks before he heads back to the paddock. This is uh, Nostradamus Colt we bought for 55 grand from January Magic Millions. Love the shape of this horse. He's a beautiful, beautiful mover. He's, uh, he's had one go in at the, at the stables. This is his second time round. Just been in for just over uh, two weeks now. So uh, hopefully we can get him through to the trials and maybe even to the races this time around, be great. Who's sleep, mate? Well, this is gonna be hard. You're the one that I wanted to showcase this week as well. So this is the horse I wanted to showcase, but unfortunately he's asleep. This is the Olympic Glory Colt that we bought from the English Classic for only 16 grand. Now you're not going to really see it, but he is just developed into the most lovely horse. I love his action and stride. Um, Olympic Glories tend to have uh, shown that they're taking a little bit longer, but this horse is uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful horse. We'll have to get some footage of him in the next week and put in the next week's show because he's worth worth looking at. You really don't have to spend a lot of money to get a a very good quality looking horse. And uh, the star of the show, the co-host, another Nostradamus. You can see the very, uh, very similar to the other Nostradamus we've shown. He's a bit of a fluffy furball because he's spelled during the winter. He's just going to have a small preparation, be sent to the paddock. He needs to go and strengthen up, but uh, 
I think he's a, he's a December foal, so he's a little bit behind, but uh, he's going to be a nice horse in the making once he, once he furnishes. The other Nostradamus looked very, very similar at this sort of stage in his preparation. There you have it, there's a look through one of our baby barns. We've got three barns, but this is one of the uh, barns where they sort of kick off and, and start. The forever changing, nice short, sharp preparations. And uh, we might do another episode once we get a new batch of all, uh, all new horses through. Thanks for watching episode 23 down here at one of the baby barns. Also, thank you to my co-host, one of our Nostradamus cults. Uh, bit of a quiet sort of fight night in racing coming up for us, but plenty of exciting things with lots of babies coming through. So looking forward to the episodes to come. Thanks for watching. Good. Yeah. Make up. Catch one, two, catch one, two. Oh, yeah.